what is new media, art and culture? Basically, the entry point for most people uh, to this field is video, one channel video, video art, that uh, artists have been producing ever since uh, 1960s. This field uh, of uh, art making involves also multi-channel installations, video art installations, but also kinetic works, digital works, interactive works, uh, works that are moving, that are kind of changing during the exhibition, uh, works that actually change from exhibition to exhibition even uh, performances and so on. And sometimes these works as a group are also called time-based media art. What they have in common is the medium of time as one of their elements, but also from uh, the perspective of uh, collecting, they are challenging the established notions of what does it take to take care of art work in a collection. If there is a crack in a painting or sculpture or if the color fades out, uh, what a restorer needs to do is to uh, fix it, to fix the crack or fix, fix the color. Uh, in other words, to return the work to its uh, original state. In the case of uh, time-based media works or uh, new media arts, uh, the situation is a little different. So what happens is, uh, of course, many of these works, uh, we can decide to return, like to show them each time as they were shown in the first time. But uh, in most cases, uh, we need to accept change, that uh, each time they have to be shown differently. So the challenge from the perspective of uh, collecting institution, so from the perspective of conservation, restoration, but also curation, is to figure out the conditions uh, for making decisions about what change is acceptable for that particular work. And this, I would say, is the main, uh, sub, like main theme of our project. The collecting of uh, the new media artworks has got its specificities and uh, they were present uh, uh, with the Slovak National Gallery since its foundation because uh, we have to uh, bear in mind that uh, it is a very young museum, established only in 1949. There were some acquisitions of new media artworks uh, even in the 60s. What is different from those times is the way we look at this kind of artworks, because uh, we uh, not only acquire the hardware or the the way it looks, but uh, we need to be aware of the meaning of all its components that uh, are ephemeral. Some of them cannot be preserved, so we have to alternate them and we have to have some restrictions or some methods, some systems of uh, rules. What is replaceable, what is not replaceable, how to deal with uh, the content and how to deal with what's the hardware. What is the main problem, uh, for example, with installations and uh, with multimedia installations uh, in particular, is quickly changing technological support of uh, these artworks together with preservation of the solid parts of the installations we have to preserve the software that can be replicable or that can be run under different technological systems. But uh, this has to be done with artistic and curatorial gestion so that uh, we can really know that we're not trespassing any artist's intentions in alternating parts of the installations. That's why uh, the main problem with acquisition of installations and especially multimedia installations is the awareness of the complexity of the piece and awareness of uh, the artist's intention in uh, also uh, possible variations of the piece. So it's really based in precise documenting of everything uh, we can document 
from the material point of view, from the software point of view, but also, and it's very important, uh, we have to collect as many artists' uh, own rules to the piece as is possible. This is very different from acquiring uh, a solid piece like uh, an oil painting or a bronze sculpture. For example, uh, this is very uh, specific with Stanofilko, but there are some other artists also like Peter Bartosz and other artists who do uh, this kind of uh, interventions into their own older pieces, also in other media like painting or drawing. But uh, for example, Stanofilko, he uh, was uh, changing the pieces or, or uh, re-layering them uh, in time. As Lucia has said, that uh, new media art and installation art is, is dynamic and needs to be recorded in iteration. It also means that the documentation of, of this kind of art needs to be different than uh, traditional art as paintings and sculptures. It's not important to just uh, write down what year the piece has been created and what material is it made of, but you need to have every face or every iteration documented uh, in, in the form of pictures and, and the way uh, the installation has been assembled, what team has been part of. And this is something that we are only starting to do in the Slovak National Gallery because um, most of the time we have been only dealing with a traditional collection management system which is not really flexible enough to, to, to record this, this kind of complex information and the relationship in between images and events means uh, exhibitions and people and the components that change over time because they are not usable anymore. So the, the form of wiki which uh, is made for this kind of fluid documents is really the best and we decided to use it so that just as the artwork itself, also the documentation is, itself is as much ready to adapt to new information, new condition as, as the artwork itself. And it also means that the people ha have to participate in the documentation, that there is no one registrar or person who documents the, the artwork, but multiple people who participate in installation with uh, restoration, with acquisition, with licensing, whatever, and all this uh, should be recorded to be able to, for, for the institution to be able to uh, decide in the future what is to be done with the artwork. I think from the point of view of the Olomouc Museum of Art, all the processes in the museum uh, undergo uh, very strict rules uh, concerning the evidence of the artworks, process of acquiring new artworks, but uh, most importantly the preservation and care for the artworks. And that's actually the biggest issue and that's why the museum at a certain point actually refused to focus on uh, new media because it was just too risky to take responsibility for such a, let's say, new medium or fragile in many aspects. And also there were problems with uh, the evidence, documentation and so on. So the acquisitions of new media started uh, just, let's say, recently. New contemporary art interventions uh, were commissioned for uh, exhibitions of, let's say, old media or older artists. So uh, for one example, uh, we last year we acquired uh, work Babiluna by Roman Štětina, uh, Czech intermediate artist in his 30s. That's actually a case study for all of us, for uh, first of all the curators, then all the documentalists and the administrators of the depositories and of the collections itself. So on this piece, which is actually the most hardcore of all new media, it's only a data uh, stored in a special case, so it has some, some uh, material uh, material um, appearance, but the art artwork itself are data. So we are still learning a lot now uh, when doing all the process step by step.
My name is Agnieszka Kubicka Dietuszycka. I come from the Raw Art Center where I work since over 20 years. I have been also involved in the issues of digitization and pre preservation of our archive. Art Biennale um, of Raw and the, the Raw Art Center are, are the first institution in Poland dealing specifically with media art since 1989. When we started, we were mainly focused on video art. But there were, from the very beginning, also other formats shown, like installations, media installations, performances, objects. In 2008, we opened the Raw Art Center, and in, in a way, it, it, this fact also opened a new, um, let's say, a needed area of expertise, which is keeping the collection or the archive alive. There are some standards, but they are very fluid. Why? Because the technology is changing. The works of, of media art today are always related in some way to technology. Majority of them relates on technological equipment that becomes obsolete and this, this obsolescence is the biggest issue we have to focus on and that is I believe also the the very core of the New Media Museums project. In the case of the Vro Art Center, the majority of our archive belongs to the genre of video art. Uh, and here, of course, we also have different formats. The oldest of the carriers uh, of, uh, in our archive, they are even umatic tapes. Uh, Betacam tapes, VHS, the, all the different <laughs> uh, formats of video and digital video uh, until now when we deal with the files. So already th this list shows the complexity of the issues. If you want to play a umatic tape, you, you need to have a umatic player. These machines still exist, but at some point they won't exist anymore. The first step is for sure the digitization of the artworks stored on uh, on tapes. Uh, the other big issue is for sure also keeping the physical carriers alive to the moment <laughs> to, to it's, it's, it's possible at all. Uh, in some cases even the empty or broken like broken cassettes might be regarded as a let's say representation of an artwork or a, or a piece or an object symbolizing the artwork that cannot be read out of this carrier anymore, uh, but the contents of which can be made available. In the first row, I would say, we ask ourselves how to make these artworks available to the audience. With the opening of the Art Center, we really started to think through the perspective of the users to provide them the experience of that artwork that was intended by the artist. It's an important par part of this uh, contextualization or recontextualization um, efforts that we've been doing just to to make the picture bigger, uh, like to, to show what is on the screen, but also what is around the screen and, and behind the screen, also in historical uh, terms. Work of media art is really embedded not only in, in like certain, um, certain time, <laughs> certain, certain culture, but also there is a bigger context around it. Technology, power relations, they are all very close together. So it's important to show, to show it all, I, I think. When we consider software-based works or net-based works, uh, the main issues always uh, come up with time. So it's not just a simple restoration process, but it's a, it's a continuous process that uh, you always kind of have to revisit. And as opposed to traditional works of art that can be viewed when they're on display, the whole purpose of net-based arts, for example, is that they're constantly available. You can just put in a domain and, uh, you know, interact with them. So uh, something that is quite important for our work at C-Cube and Geo from Budapest is that we constantly have to care for these works. And a lot of time it's kind of like stumbling upon issues, uh, broken links, uh, outdated technologies, like flash, uh, I imagine is uh, not just a problem for us, but it's a global uh, phenomenon that basically the environment that these works were made in uh, ceased to exist. So 
uh, there's not much that you can do there. You kind of have to come up with innovative solutions to be able to present these works. Also presentation-wise, uh, it's quite different. Uh, with software-based works, uh, you need uh, someone who sits in front of a screen and uh, if that's uh, you know in a gallery that's fine but uh, a lot of uh, these net based artworks were imagined to be accessed from home from a comfortable setting uh, maybe they had other functionalities like uh, sending images or finding out information um, so we kind of have to be mindful about these things when we you know, kind of uh, interact with these works or if we want to restore them. In our case, our plan is to commission an artist to uh, look at these works uh, more closely and look at their visual qualities, uh, but also the social context that they were produced in. And uh, based on that, uh, come up with uh, basically a new artwork that uh, has elements of these uh, old works and represent this utopian moment at the end of the 90s when basically creating a website equaled with communicating with the world and uh, presenting yourself to the world. So we think that maybe this way we kind of come across this issue of having to exactly recreate something that cannot be recreated anymore but save the essence for future generations. We are exhibiting uh, mostly net-based artworks and or software-based artworks uh, in the context of screensaver. Yes, that's sometimes a problem to reinterpret different kind of medias to a screensaver. But our screensaver works on, on top of uh, web-based technologies, so we are pretty well able to exhibit uh, classical medias like uh, videos or animations or whatever. But uh, when we are doing some research projects, uh, which we are, we are used to, sometimes we have to uh, reinterpret, uh, for example, some older screensavers or some older uh, artworks which were done as a screensavers. So that's the issue. Uh, what we are dealing with right now, I think, uh, for, for the next project, uh, The Art of Screensaver. But as we are not the institution for collecting or, or preserving some kind of art, uh, or this kind of art, um, we are working with the material like more free and, uh, let's say, more punk way. We are trying to translate to new technologies or, the, or to technologies we are using. So if there is a flash animation, we are trying to translate to canvas, uh, HTML canvas element. Uh, if there is a screensaver as a program, we are trying to get the source code and reinterpret or compile as a web assembly. Uh, if there is no source code and we have just a file, I mean the executable file, we are trying to decompile and try to read what, what is written inside the code, for sure, uh, with the author's agreement. So we can ask them if we can do this or if they have source code and we can reinterpret. We are not successful in every case, so sometimes we, uh, we can only do to, to get, uh, get uh, I mean, some historical hardware, uh, run the screensaver there, record the screen, and then show just uh, a reconstruction of this way. I mean, like a screen recording on, uh, on a historical devices. So that's probably the way how, how we deal with it.